are a number of different procedures that can be performed uh, to deal with certain issues relating to the intestines. And I'm going to go through some of them right now. So here we have a normal representation of the intestines, just so you can understand um, how the following diagrams are different. So a right hemicolectomy is a procedure that's usually done for malignancies affecting the right side of the colon, and it involves removing everything uh, from the ileocecal valve all the way up to about a third of the way along the transverse colon. And uh, patients in this case uh, may be able to have a primary anastomosis, in which case the ileum is joined onto the remaining bit of colon, or sometimes they may be left with a stoma instead. A left hemicolectomy, on the other hand, is usually done for problems uh, affecting the descending colon, so for example a tumour, and it involves removing everything from around two-thirds of the way along the transverse colon all the way down to uh, the sigmoid area, and it can um, be joined together with primary anastomosis. There are a number of different terms that are used to describe uh, more extensive operations that remove all or most of uh, the colon and rectum. So I'm just going to put them side by side so you're able to appreciate which bits uh, are left really in these different procedures. A pan proctocolectomy, as the prefix pan suggests, is that it takes absolutely everything of the colon and the rectum. So everything from the ileocecal valve all the way down towards the anus will be removed and this tends to be done for um, fairly diffuse diseases that affect um, the entirety of the colon, so such as familial adenomatous polyposis and ulcerative colitis. A total colectomy is a little bit less extensive in that it leaves uh, the rectum but takes all the rest of the colon. And a subtotal colectomy is when the rectum and part of the sigmoid colon is left in situ whereas the rest of the colon is removed. So given that these patients have had most of their large bowel removed, we need to consider what they will be left with. So in the case of a pan proctocolectomy, they will likely be left with an end ileostomy, which means that uh, whichever loose end of the ileum is remaining will be brought up to the skin. A relatively new operation that has um, been quite popular among patients is something called an ileal pouch anal anastomosis and the reason it's favoured is because it allows patients to maintain uh, their faecal continence. It involves using the loose end of the ileum to form this J or W shaped um, pouch and essentially that becomes somewhat of a neorectum which allows faeces to be stored before it is excreted. So it saves the patient from having a stoma and allows them a decent quality of life if it works. And finally, in patients who have a reasonable amount of their distal colon remaining, they are likely to end up with an end ileostomy and a rectal or sigmoid stump. Moving on to Hartman procedure, it's a relatively common procedure that's done usually under emergency circumstances for diseases that affect the sigmoid colon. So that could include a malignant obstruction, it could include a sigmoid volvulus or some sort of diverticular um, complication, which usually involves the sigmoid colon. So a Hartman's procedure is a sigmoidectomy with an end ileostomy and a rectal stump. So we can see the transition on screen right now. And the reason that it's done, usually under emergency circumstances, is because when someone, for example, has had a diverticular perforation and their abdomen is quite inflamed and the conditions for healing are suboptimal, you don't really want to be creating an anastomosis because it is not likely to succeed. So in these circumstances, the most important thing is to gain control of the surgical problem going on, such as a diverticular perforation, and you do that by getting rid of the chunk of bowel that is affected, and you leave an end colostomy and a rectal stump in place, and perhaps at a later date it can be reversed, but I think a relatively large proportion of patients will continue to just have an end colostomy and not undergo the reversal procedure. So the key point to remember is that a Hartman's procedure is usually done under emergency circumstances where the conditions for healing of a primary anastomosis are suboptimal, in which case you settle for an end colostomy and a rectal stump. Anterior resections and AP resections are two types of operation that are usually performed for rectal tumours and they are performed in slightly different circumstances. So an anterior resection, as you can see from the image on the left, 
involves removing the sigmoid colon and the top part of the rectum. So it tends to be done for higher rectal tumors, whereas an AP resection or abdominoperineal resection involves removing everything from the anus up to the top of the sigmoid colon. And that tends to be done for lower lying rectal tumors. So the main distinction to bear in mind is that anterior resection is for higher rectal tumors and AP resection is for lower rectal tumors. One caveat to bear in mind is that in some cases a low anterior resection may be performed where the distal margin of the section that's removed is brought down a little bit so a little bit of rectum is still preserved however a sort of mid-level rectal tumor will be able to be removed. So following an anterior resection which spares the lower part of the rectum patients may end up with an end colostomy as seen at the top left or they may potentially be able to have a primary anastomosis. However, they may also require a defunctioning loop ileostomy, which I'm going to talk about in a second. If someone has an AP resection, however, that means that they no longer have a rectum, anus, or sigmoid colon, so all they will be left with is an end colostomy. A defunctioning loop ileostomy is a slightly bizarre concept to get your head around, but it does make quite a lot of sense. So it involves bringing a loop of ileum to the surface and splitting it such that two lumens are seen on the on the surface. And the reason that a defunctioning loop ileostomy is done is to divert a fecal stream from a distal anastomosis. So imagine this patient has had an anterior resection with a primary anastomosis. It takes a little bit of time for that anastomosis to heal, so you want to try and give it the best possible chance of it healing by preventing any feces from going towards it too soon. So essentially a defunctioning loop ileostomy works to divert the fecal stream into a stoma bag until that primary anastomosis has healed. And the reason that the ileum is used is because it heals a lot better once reconnected than uh, the colon would. And finally, the last type of stoma I'd like to talk about, which is a little bit different, is a urostomy or an ileal conduit. So this involves removing a little bit of ileum, forming a little pouch, bringing it to the surface so that it forms a stoma, and then connecting the ureters onto the end of that pouch. So this is done usually in conditions where the bladder needs to be removed or where the bladder doesn't work properly. So a common indication is bladder cancer where the patient has had a cystectomy and hence they need to be able to bring their urine out of the body and one of the best ways of doing that is through an ileal conduit. Music